G'day mate, welcome to Factorio with me, JD. If you've just bought Factorio or you've just lost your first game to the biters and you're looking for a good map, then this is the video for you. We're going to have no intro, no special effects, we're just going to get right down to business. So, firstly, I do want to step through the settings menu and show you guys a couple of settings I turn on via default. I'm not going to go in and explain what these are, I am going to actually link on the top right hand corner, I have another video that'll explain what these settings do in more in depth. At the same time, there is also a link to the same video down in the description as a playlist, because this is gonna be a, a, a whole series I'm gonna be doing going forth. So, first thing I wanna do is I wanna turn on all of these four settings. Same thing, I also wanna turn on uh, pick a ghost item and opening a technology tree. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna have three quick bars and three shortcut bars. Also wanna change the train visualization length up to 12. Uh, after we've done that, we're going to click confirm. We're going to go into single player. We're going to do a new game. I'm going to assume either you've already played through the tutorial or you're a gamer like me who just skips the tutorial and hopes for the best. So we're going to jump straight into free play and we're going to preview the map. And this is the random map that the game's given us. Now, what I actually want to do is I want to import a map exchange string. And again, this will be linked down in the description. You can go open up the file. It's a simple text document with a bunch of random gibberish in there. But once we paste that there and click confirm, this is the map that I've actually sort of handpicked for new players or, you know, those that have might have had a failure once or twice already. So as you can see, I've bumped up the frequency, the size and the richest richness of all the resources, except for uranium. I haven't really bothered, honestly, because the uranium you find on the map is more than enough generally already. Um, the terrain, I've turned off water, basically because you get water in the starting zone. That's generally enough. Again, this is an option for you. You could turn it on if you want. You could shrink it down. You could bring it up larger. At the same time, I've also turned off cliffs. Mainly because cliffs are generally annoying. You might really enjoy cliffs. If you, if it's your first time through, maybe you want to turn cliffs on, experience cliffs for the first time. I sort of recommend it at least play one game with cliffs on. Then you can find out whether you hate them, like a lot of players do, at which point you turn them off uh, indefinitely. Enemies are on. But you might have noticed I've turned off the expansion and the evolution. It means that biters exist... <laughs> But also, they're well and truly off in the distance because we've turned the starting area up to 600% of normal size. Don't worry, you can still get all the achievements with this particular map. It's one of the things I definitely checked before I, you know, load it up and put it in the description for you guys. But biters shouldn't worry you. They do exist. You might have to deal with them eventually, but early on and for a majority of the game, you could pretty much ignore them. On top of that, I've turned on a research queue. I've also stopped the pollution expanding out on the map. Now, this is obviously a custom setting for this particular map. Again, it doesn't disable achievements, but it does mean that pollution is not going to spread across the map. So it's going to be different to any future games that you have where this is not set to the default 2%. With all that said, we're going to click play. And um, obviously we're gonna check really quickly. Achievements, I already have a whole bunch of achievements. Because all these ones are still highlighted so I can still track them. In fact, I'm actually tracking mass production number two up here, produced one million green circuits. As you can see, this is our starting zone. Very simple, very nice. At the same time, uh, there is one command which you will probably have to run. And again, this is gonna be down, down in the description below. It is unlock the shortcut bar. As you can see, I already have a a uh, blueprint book, a blueprint, upgrade planner, deconstruction planner, the paste, the cut, um, the copy, the import blueprint strings. I have a lot of buttons down here that you probably won't have. So what I do recommend is you, again, open up the console with a tilde command. That is the button to the left of number one. Paste in uh, a slash unlock hyphen shortcut hyphen bar, and it should give you the copy paste commands. They're very, very handy, even early game where you don't actually have access to robots and all sorts of things, which I will cover in further videos, but just the simple copy and paste so you can build something once, copy it, paste it, and it'll put down, not the exact, it, it won't actually put down the items, but it'll put down a, a ghost, a blueprint, a suggestion of what those items are, and then you can build over the top. So with that said, that's where I'm gonna end this video. Like I said, it's short, it's sweet, it's quick. There is a playlist down in the description below with a whole bunch more information. Uh, at the same time, if you have any further questions, you want any help with Factorio, by all means, jump on our Discord. Um, again, it's down in the description below. We have thousands, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of players on our Discord server that are all more than happy to help. We're all experts in Factorio. We've all been playing it for a couple of years at this stage, and we're more than help happy to help you out and answer any questions. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video. All right, bye.